How's it going, everybody? What we're going to be learning today is a couple of applications of vectors, as seen in section 12.5 of our textbook. Now, what we've been doing most recently with vectors is we've been writing or working with the vector form of linear equations and seeing how you can you take an equation of a line in two or three dimensions and represent it using vectors. Okay? Well, specifically, what we're going to do now that's related is that you're going to learn to use vectors to solve problems involving displacements and velocities. The specific application that IB cares about you using vectors for is for displacements and velocities. Okay. Now, there are many other applications you've learned in physics, for instance, involving vectors, but that's what we're focusing on here. Now, what I'd like to do in this video is basically work through an IB problem that would involve a position and displacement, velocities, all that kind of stuff. But I need to explain to you the basic equation that we're going to be working with when we do such a problem, and so that's what I want to look at right here. Okay? Just ignore that stuff that was on the screen a second ago that I erased right now. Now, you ought to recognize this equation as being the equation, the vector form of a linear equation, all right, where a point or a, a, the position of a vector equals its initial position plus some parameter times its direction vector. All right, now we can use this same form to represent something that's in motion, in a linear motion. Now this could be like you have plane, a plane that's flying in a line. Or it could be a boat that's sailing in a straight line, or a helicopter that's flying in a line, or a car that's driving in a straight line, or, or anything that could go in a straight line. Now, the R and the A and the T and the B are going to represent something particular for these types of problems, though. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to determine or describe what the position of an object in motion is at a certain time. And that's what R is going to represent. R is going to be the position vector for an object at time t. Which then if I'm going to say it's at time t, I may as well come over here and tell you that the t, which doesn't have to be a t, it just has to be the scalar multiple right here, is going to represent time in whatever units the problem chooses to use. Okay, now the a Hopefully you would recognize this just from what it represents with a normal vector equation of a line. Uh, a in this problem is going to be the initial position of the object. And this value B is going to be a vector, and in particular, it's going to be the velocity vector for this object. Now, why would velocity be a vector? Because it has to have a direction. Velocity has to have a direction and a magnitude, whereas something like speed, which we'll try to contrast this, doesn't have a direction, so it would just be a scalar number. Now, I want to explain to you briefly why this would be the way the equation would be if you're trying to, ex to show the position of an object at time t. And I'm going to add a couple things to the diagram here, or I'm going to make a diagram because I don't have one yet. Now you see three dots here. These represent a few different things. Um, the first one, this point down here at the bottom, let's just say that that represents the origin. And then this point nearly right above it, the way I drew it, well, that would represent the initial position, or kind of the A. Truly what A is, is this vector that connects the origin all right, to the initial position. All right, so really that's, that's the A right there. All right, now that's the initial position of the object, right? And let's say the object is moving in this direction here. And it moves until that point. Well, that point is going to be kind of the new position. It's going to correspond with the R, the vector that gets you from the initial position right there over to the endpoint. That would be vector R. All right. And, well, actually, sorry. That's an important vector, but that's not R. 
vector r would be where the object is in comparison to the origin. Let me fix that. So this would be the vector r. But that's just the direction right there that this thing is traveling in. Well, see if this makes sense. If you start somewhere and you want to figure out where you're going to end up, it depends on how long you're traveling for or how long the object is in motion and the direction that it travels. And the velocity tells you the direction that it travels. So this vector right here happens to be t times b. But what it truly represents is the displacement vector for the object. And if you want to find out where it's located compared to where it started, you need to know how far and in which direction it was displaced. That's how that equation works. All right, you've got the background. Let's go ahead and work with the problem then. All right, and it is an IB question, so there's plenty here. Um, you might pause and read through this. I'm going to read through it now, but it might help you to pause, write it down, so you've got it for notes and so forth. Uh, the problem says, toy airplanes fly in a straight line at a constant speed. Airplane 1 passes through a point A. Its position P seconds after it has passed through A is given by this vector equation here. You can see it's in three dimensions. So the position x, y, z equals 3, negative 4, 0 plus a scalar number P times negative 2, 3, 1, and that P is how many seconds it is after the plane passes through point A. All right, well, the first thing it wants us to do is to write down the coordinates of A. <clears throat> now, remember, the position vector right here is showing us where this thing is P seconds after it's passed through A, which means that A is the initial value, the initial position. And so all this question is asking us for is what is the initial position of the plane? And remember, we just talked about how whenever you're looking at the position vector for a plane, where it is after t seconds, that you start with its initial position right here. And instead of writing the coordinates, well, when it says write down the coordinates of A, it wants us to write this as an ordered triple, not as a vector. So we would say the point, well, not negative 3, it would be 3 negative 4, 0. Those are the coordinates of A. All right, the next thing it says is to find the speed of the airplane in meters per second. Now, I want to go back to the diagram that I showed you a moment ago and explain something really quickly. Remember the displacement, we said, is a vector. This vector right there is a displacement, all right? It's actually based on the velocity, correct? Because that's how the direction is determined right there. Well, what I'm trying to explain to you here is that speed and velocity have a relationship. Um, velocity has direction, speed doesn't. Speed is just how fast you're going in a certain direction. So the speed is actually the magnitude of this vector right there, the magnitude of that vector. Let's write that over here. Speed is the magnitude of velocity. <clears throat> And the velocity was right here, correct? And so we'll do the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. That'll give us 4 plus 9 plus 1. That's 14. The square root of 14, as an exact value, is the speed of this airplane. Which, to three significant figures, is about 3.74 meters per second. Okay, so there's parts, or there's parts 1 and 2 of a. We found the initial position of the plane, and we found out what its speed was. Now, we're going to answer a little bit more. Um, it asks, after seven seconds, or it says after seven seconds, the airplane passes through a second point, B, and it wants us to find the coordinates of B. Well, quite simply, what you can do with this equation is you can plug in an amount of time, P in this case, to figure out what the current position of the plane would be. So just plug in 7 for P, which you see I've done right here, and then just add these two vectors together. Remember, do, do the scalar multiple oh, whenever you do that. So we'll have 3 plus 7 times negative 2. 3 plus negative 14 is negative 11. 
Then for the y components, negative 4 plus 7 times 3, negative 4 plus 21 is 17. And then we'll have 0 plus 7 times 1, 0 plus 7 is 7. There's the coordinates to that point B. Oh, actually, that's the position vector for B. And since it says write down the coordinates, we're going to write that down as an ordered triple. Negative 11, comma 17, comma 7. The next thing it asks for us to do is to find the distance the plane has traveled in the first seven seconds. Now, if we started at a point A and we ended at a point B and we want to know the distance that they traveled, essentially we're looking at finding a magnitude here. The magnitude of the vector that gets you from point A to point B. And the vector from A to B would simply be found by subtracting this, the vector for B minus the vector from A. Okay, so there's vector OB, there's vector OA. Find the difference between them, and that's this here. And then find the magnitude of that. And you find that it's the square root of 686, or approximately 26.2, since we've been working with meters this entire time. All right, great. Hopefully you're following along so far. Now we're going to throw in a second plane into this process. All right, so the airplane 2 passes through a point C and its position Q seconds after it passes through C is given by this vector over here. And it tells us that the angle between the flight paths of the two planes is 40 degrees and it wants us to find the two values of A. So let's just say it's plane 1 and plane 2 right there. Remember that we learned that if you want to find the angle theta between two vectors, and let's just say it's vector A and vector B because that's what we used before, that that cosine of that angle theta equals, well, let's write it this way actually, the scalar product of those two vectors is equal to the product of the magnitudes of those two vectors times the cosine of the angle between them. Okay, well... Using that, we're trying to find the value of something called A, and you're going to notice that within this velocity vector right there, we have an A for the, y comp or the Z component. So right there is the value that we're trying to find. And what we can do with that is this. Since we know that the angle between the two flight paths is 40 degrees, then we can find the scalar product of the direction for the two planes, and we then can figure out what A is because, well, we'll be able to fill in all these values otherwise. Let's find the scalar product of the directions of these two planes. And the directions of these two planes are determined by their velocities here and in the previous equation. All right, let's find that scalar product. Right, there's a plane one equation, there's a plane two equation, and I highlighted in yellow the velocity vector is really the direction. And let's find the scalar product. Remember, you multiply the x components, negative 1 times negative 2. The y component is 2 times 3. The z component is a times 1. And you add those together. Which for us then means that a dot b equals 8 plus a. Now, the magnitude of a would be the magnitude of the flight path of plane 1, the way that we did this. or the magnitude of the direction, basically this right here, all right? And the magnitude of negative 2, 3, 1 is the square root of 14, as we found out earlier. And then the magnitude of the second vector would be 1 plus 4 plus a squared. And then times the cosine of 40 degrees. Now, I don't have a lot of space to solve this, so I'm going to put this on a blank slide and finish solving the equation. And we're trying to solve for a. And algebraically, the way that we'll do that is square both sides because we need to get this a out from underneath the radical. Now, on the left side, that's going to give us a squared plus 16a plus 64. And on the right side, remember when you square a product, you square each factor in that product. So we need to square the square root of 14. That is 14. Then we square the square root of 1 plus 4 plus a squared, which is, is 1 plus 4 plus a squared. 
And then we multiply by the cosine of 40 squared because, well, we had to square each factor in the product, right? Now let's write that right side of the equation in as simple a way as we possibly can. And I'll tell you how I'm simplifying that. I'm approximating as well, by the way. I'm not leaving exact values anymore. I found out what the cosine squared of 40 degrees is and multiplied that by 14 and got 2.20 to three significant figures. And then we'll go ahead and, and distribute that. So we'd have 2.20 times one. Well, you know what, that's really five, isn't it? So let's do 2.20 times five. So that gets us 11 plus about 2.20a squared. And this is really a calculator question from here on. Uh, you'll, you can either set this equation equal to this equation on a calculator, graph them and find out where they intersect, or you could set this equation equal to zero and then graph that and find the, the x-intercepts. That's what I would suggest, or use quadratic formula also. Let's make this 1.20 times a squared. When we subtract a squared from both sides, and then we'd have minus 16a, and then 11 minus 64 minus 53. All right, again, use your chosen method, quadratic formula or whatnot, to figure out what a could possibly be equal to. And in so doing, you're going to get two different values to three significant figures. You're going to get 16.1. You're also going to get negative 2.75. And since A was just part of the velocity vector right there, it can be negative. You're going to use both of those values. Did find, find two values of A, right? Those were the instructions. There you go. That's how you use vectors in order to represent velocities and displacements. Hope that was helpful. I will see you later, guys. Bye.